It's front page news. The cleanup along the Florida Panhandle beaches is to scale back this after the last eight months of round the clock onshore oil cleaning. At the same time today, the U.S. government launches its largest oil spill related health study in history. They're still here driving heavy machines, sifting through thousands of tons of sand and loading up tar balls by the bucket. I think we're making progress. Keith Rupp helps lead Florida's BP operations. He's based not far from Escambia County, where Pensacola Beach is still feeling the effects from the oil spill. As little as five miles east or west from the pier and the popular tourist section of the beach are the workers and the equipment. They're finding tar balls buried as many as three feet below the sand. There's spots where there's uh, a lot of activity still going on. There's a couple of areas where there are uh, you know, sub submerged uh, tar mats that, uh, that were working to, you know, to try to get cleaned up. Workers in Florida have collected over 2 million pounds of oily material and counting. A heavy surf like the one today or even a storm, a hurricane can kick up oil globs that may still be in the Gulf. How long will you stay? as long as it takes. Right now, there are some 350 BP workers, including those who clean the beaches in Florida full time. But Rupp says starting this week, the beach cleanup is being cut back as spring break is just around the corner. Also today, the U.S. government announced it's launching a health study to see if anyone working on the cleanup since the spill is getting sick as a result of those jobs. So far, roughly 30 people in the Gulf Coast region have complained of illnesses. The Gulf study will help us learn if oil spills and exposure to crude oil dispersants and fumes affect physical and mental health. An estimated 130,000 people, most from Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi and Florida, worked on the spill or signed up to do so. We should note that the spill study won't prove definitely whether BP oil is causing any health problems. As for the cleanup out on the beach, while BP is pulling some of its resources, some of the heavy machinery will stay just in case. Reporting on Pensacola Beach, Lindsay Kruger, NBC2. Thanks, Allison. We go back to one of the area's hardest hit economically and environmentally by the Gulf oil spill. Pensacola Beach in the Florida Panhandle lost billions of dollars when tar balls and oil sheens began washing ashore. No one was spared. Hotels, restaurants, shops, everyone lost, but most survived. NBC2's Lindsay Kruger continues part two of our special report with a look at how business is doing now. You have to look hard and you have to talk to the locals if you want to know anything about the BP oil spill 10 months ago. There are no signs of the disaster here in the heart of Pensacola Beach, where business owners, tourism officials and hoteliers are focused on the future. It was special right on the other night. It's one of the newest hotels on Pensacola Beach, a four star luxury resort with a popular name attached to it. But even that couldn't help this Gulf Run Hotel. They opened July 1st, right in the middle of the oil spill. We were very traumatized by I guess would be the right word. It was uh, like impending doom coming. Tar balls washed up on Pensacola Beach in mid-June. Two weeks later, an oil sheen came ashore just yards from Margaritaville. And of course, when the oil came in, the locals didn't come out, the tourists stayed away. Hotels sat empty, as did local restaurants and beach shops. It was the worst possible time for a disaster to hit. June, July and August are the money making months for this area. It was very disheartening. Ed Schrader heads up tourism development for Escambia County. He says the oil spill did more damage to the local economy than a hurricane. This was different. Uh, it, it lasted five months. Um, didn't know how bad it might get. It was bad. Some local businesses are no more. Many others are open, but struggling. I didn't have that income this summer, and so I'm behind on some payments and it's hurt my credit score. Fred Simmons owns four businesses on Pensacola Beach, vacation rentals, a hotel, a beach bar. He figures he's out $750,000. I've still got some problems. Uh, BP uh, so far, or the Feinberg GCCF. Uh, has only paid about one third of my claims. The Gulf Coast Claims Facility has so far paid out nearly $1.4 billion to Florida businesses and individuals, but there are still about 100,000 people who have yet to see a dime. Just this week, Ken Feinberg announced a staff increase at claims offices in the hardest hit areas. That includes this one in Pensacola, and he's asking for patience. Those who are truly unhappy and feel that they've got the runaround or they haven't got a fair shake, 
please do not lose confidence in the process. Tough to do for folks like Simmons. This time last year, he was one step from retirement. I had hoped to start kicking back a little bit before this thing happened, but it's going to be a while, I'm afraid. While many business owners along Pensacola Beach are still waiting for reimbursement checks, the county has seen its cut. Nearly $3 billion. That money was used on marketing and advertising to promote the beaches. Whether it worked, we'll find out this summer. On Pensacola Beach, Lindsay Kruger, NBC2. Tourism is the number one industry in the Florida Panhandle. This week is the beginning of season with the kickoff to spring break. The next couple of months are crucial in that part of Florida. As NBC2's Lindsay Kruger explains, a strong spring break means a strong summer, and that is something the area desperately needs after last year's bust from the oil spill. It's a spring break hotspot, 136 miles of beaches from Panama City, Florida, west to Gulf Shores, Alabama. And here in Pensacola Beach, they typically see tens of thousands of people for spring break. But this is the first spring break since the oil spill, and it's unclear what they'll see. It's perhaps the most important spring break season for the Florida Panhandle ever, and the locals want to know, will the college students return? Will families visit? It really, really sets the tone for a successful summer is what's going to happen in um, April and May. Escambia County's VP of Tourism says he's cautiously optimistic. So far, the weather is better now than the same time last year. Inquiries to the Visitors Bureau and hits to tourism websites are up 15% over last year. And in the current advertising, of sugar white beaches. There is no mention of the oil spill from last year, the oil spill that wiped out billions from the local economy. We were looking at the best year we ever had on record. With 2010 a washout, 2011 is crucial. This is a diesel fuel. It's local restaurants and beach bars are planning big parties and spending more money on entertainment. So we don't charge a cover, so we pay for the bands and we just hope people come out. This season is the true test of recovery. This area just one of many desperate to bounce back from the oil spill. But even 10 months later, there are still some signs of the disaster. The county's environmental point person says it'll be at least three years before this area is back to pre oil spill status. Will they see tar? Um, maybe, maybe not. But just in case. Bring some uh, wet ones, skin so soft, with paper towels, and that will wipe the tar off. These next two months need to be big with packed beaches and hotels. Whatever happens this spring leads into the summer. We just want to think positive, and I think everybody can't wait to get back to the Gulf Coast. Spring break typically runs from now through the end of April, with the week of March 14th being the busiest. That's when the majority of schools in the southeast are off. Reporting on Pensacola Beach, Lindsay Kruger, NBC2.